extreme caution and integrity. We have to learn how to work together even when our mindset is different. I, I really believe when you, amen, when we purpose in our heart and our spirit to do what the Lord will have us to do, some of the issues that we're dealing with, amen, we can resolve them before they get to a place where they are out of control. See, the Bible addresses politics among the fashions. For the Apostle Paul dealt with the fashions in the Corinthian church. He said, for you are still the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when, I, for when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Paulus, are not being merely human. 1 Corinthians 3, 3 and 4. See, one group in the Corinthian church claimed to be a following of Christ. One may find it interesting that Paul did not commend those who followed him, but condemn each of the faction. Paul identified these political factions in Corinth as distraction from the mission of the church and selfish in motivation. You've got to be careful of allowing people to put you in the clique, put you in the fashion put you in certain groups. You have to be wise enough and say, no, that's not what it's about. Amen. It's about unity. It is about oneness. If there's problems, let us sit down and talk about it so we can get this thing under control. Why? Because the ultimate goal is that God may get to glory. Amen. I've shared that some time ago, we did a workshop called the Irresistible Church. The Irresistible the Church. Not irresistible to man, but to irresistible to God. What does that mean? That means when we congregate, when we come into the house of the Lord at a particular time, that when God sees us coming, he says, I've got to go down. Why? Because they are one. Why? Because there's love. Why? Because there's kindness among them. And it's important for us to get rid of the cliques. Amen. And don't let nobody put you, amen, in that position where you are disliking somebody who have not done anything to you. Amen. You can't allow just because I don't like Sister Moochie, that means that you don't have to like Sister Moochie. Sister Moochie haven't done anything to you. Amen. Don't pick up somebody else. Fight. Amen. You got to learn to fight your own battles. Oh, God, help us in this house. Church politics. Now, here's the next one unclear authority. See, when lines of authority are unclear, church volunteers and leaders sometimes exercise authority out of the realm of their responsibilities. That's why it's so much, it has to be so important for the church that we have a clear line of authority. Amen. Who's in charge? Because if there's unclear line, everybody will want to be in charge. And you'll be surprised. People say, no, I don't want to be in charge. Yeah, you, you do. Amen. Because your mannerism, your behavior, Amen. I know you might be a supervisor on the job, but that doesn't mean that you're a supervisor in the church. You might be a foreman or manager and where you, but that doesn't mean that you're one in the church. Amen. You have to realize, and there's an expression we say it because of your ministry. When you find you're there, stay there. Amen. When you find you're there, stay, stay in your place. And when everybody gets in their place, we don't know what to pray for. Amen. The problem is there's unclear authority. See, such conflict may become worse in times of crisis. You see, a biblical example of the lack of clarity and authority was during the transition between King Saul and David in Israel. Amen. Personality differences. This is a this is a good one. The real or perceived differences among your congregation play underlying roles in communication and conflict. Now, remember why others talk and act as they do may prevent un misunderstanding and false assumption. The time honor, the DISC profile system, may help church staff and committee members to understand their differences. There are four basic personalities or communication profiles, and they are dominant, influencer, steady, and conscientious. See, when people discover and discuss their personality styles, healthy communication may resolve. More importantly, biblical fellowship among people is the best way for people to understand one another and grow together. You know, I said last night, we have to spend time outside of church with one another. Not with just a certain group of people, but everyone. 
Because when you spend time, amen, and you give your sins a chance to understand somebody else, when you are approached by someone and they say, Brother Longhead did that, you said, no, that's not him. That's not his nature. How do you know? Because I spent time with him. And that's what we have to do outside the church. I, I, I'm a strong believer that our ministry and our auxiliary is not just about collecting money. I think it's about sharing. I think it's about caring. I think it's about displaying who we really are. And you know something? We've been wearing masks for a long time. Not just coronavirus. Some of us have been wearing them before even then. We, we need to pull off the mask. And let's be real. And let's be true to our own self. We might have some flaws. Amen. But somebody else does too. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We are imperfect people. Amen. Trying to become what God want us to be. So our personality differences causes us to have an unhealthy relationship because we're not trying to understand what's wrong with Sister Mucci or what's wrong with Brother Longhead. We're not trying to understand, but as a believer and as a child of God, it is one of your responsibility to love ye one another, to comfort ye one another, to pray for we one another. Amen. That we would take the focus off of ourselves and put it on somebody else. You see, churches don't just crack. The crack leads to crumbling. We always blame this crumbling on the enemy. Sure, the devil plays his part. However, we who continue to watch our salvation instead of surrendering to God aid the enemy in this work. We let pride and lack of humility, preoccupation or lack of vision, and or jealousy or lack thereof of love contribute to the gravity of the pendulum of the wrecking ball. Sin in the church is a common source of disunity in the body of Christ. These issues can be from gossip, pride, and fear. Others can be linked to sin issues with compromising the word of God to cater to the world. Let us be honest when looking at things that can cause divisions or barriers in the church. They all stem from the issues. Pride may be the leading cause of division in the church. People often behave with self-centeredness, ego, and pride, spiritual or and emotional immaturity. You see, maturity helps a person understand that, that differences in perspective broaden understanding. You see, change and flexibility, change is the norm. Since the human heart is sinful, we should not be shocked that we experience conflicts such as hatred and fighting jealousy and anger however the promise of god to his people is new a heart and a new spirit since the holy spirit is active his presence will be visible by the distinct indication of love joy and peace you know you ever run into some of the church people who brag about how they are bullies they, they brag about telling people off Talk about, you know, how they used to be. But the scripture said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, come on, he is a. And we, we, we always have a chance and, and we be, we you know, we boast about it. You don't mess with me. I ain't the one to mess with. Amen. When I was in the street, this is what I did. But you in the church, we doing the same thing in the church we do in the street. And we saying that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. There, where is the change? Where, where is the difference? If the Holy Spirit is active, amen, there should be an indication of love, joy, and peace. Even when you're wrong by some people, amen, you still got to love them anyhow. While we were yet in sin, what? Christ died for when we were in sin, when we were practitioners in sin, Christ had already died for us. He didn't die for us when we got perfect. He died when we was messed up. Amen. When we slam the door of our hearts to one another, we close our hearts to God. When we have an unguarded heart to one another, we can seek the spirit of Christ. Paul once said that we regard no one from a human point of view, because if anyone is Christ, he is a new creation. We see one another not as we are naturally, but as what we are and will become in Christ. Amen. You most of us been in the church quite some time now, uh, we have to start seeing spiritually. 
and not physically. We have to start seeing the way God sees things. Come on, somebody. If you spend time with God, uh, God will spend time with you. And God will share himself with you. He'll show himself to you. He'll talk to you. Amen. And when he does those things, and if you are children and you accept those things, you will start talking like God. You'll start acting like God. You'll start behaving like God. When people say, child, I wouldn't have let that done to me. I would have gotten her straight, but I'm not you now. Because I've been spending time with the Lord. Because I know I messed up before. And you messed up before. But if God would have got us when we was messed up, we wouldn't have hope today. But I heard somebody say, he looked beyond all my faults. Look beyond all my mistakes. Amen. I'm not the only one made mistakes. We all have to look in the mirror and say who we really are. Yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. Bless the name. See, these three, three more hindrances that we may recognize. Preoccupation or lack of vision. Pride or lack of humility, jealousy or lack of love. Listen, preoccupation, lack of wisdom, pride, and jealousy. Amen. Let me say something to you. Let me say this to you. Why, why you why we are jealous of one another? Amen. If we have the same father, and you said that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, you said the silver and the gold belongs to him. You said the earth is the Lord and the thinness thereof. You said that he was your heavenly father. If we serve the same father, and if he can bless this one, he can bless that one. Come on, somebody. And the reason why a lot of times we are not blessed like other folk are blessed because we have not surrendered, we haven't submitted, and we haven't been obedient. Because once we learn how to surrender and submit and obey God, the Bible said, if you will in obedient, ye shall eat the good of the lamb. God will not withhold from his children. Amen. That which is good. Listen, beloved, you don't have to be jealous of somebody else. Show what they're driving at. Show what they're living over here. Show what they possess that. Thank God for what you have. Thank God for what you have. Amen. You know God knows better because some of us couldn't handle, amen, the things that God has given somebody else. Oh, bless his name. Yes, so we got to stop being jealous of one another and say, Tata, thank God for you. I saw you pull up tonight. That's a beautiful car. Oh, Jesus. Lord, sister, you looking wonderful in that hat tonight. Amen. You want to compliment other people. Don't be jealous of other people. Child, that ain't real. How you know it's not real? Amen. Child, I know I was with her. So what? Sometimes we just need to just, shh, just be quiet. What the scripture says, sometimes you got to study to be what? Study to be quiet. Amen. How do we break down barriers? Listen here. Do you have your ID? You see, identification is the principal factor in breaking down our erected walls. What is holding you back? What has you, has isolated you? Amen. What's holding us back? What has isolated? Let me say something, saints. It's not God that, that wants to isolate us from our sisters and brothers. That's the work of the enemy. You know, we, I, I watch the Discovery Channel, and, and I watch the lioness when they go after the gazelles and the, the praise of the desert. And, and, and I learned that the, the lioness, not the lion, the lioness is the one that go hunting. And, and they, they get together. Amen. They look over and, and see all the animals out there. And they spot out the young one. They spot out the one that's weak. They spot the one that's slow. And know what they do? They separate them from the rest of the bunch. And when the rest of them go, and because these three are weakened, it's easy to capture them. And that's how the devil does us. He isolates us. He keeps us from coming to the house of God. He keeps us from fellowshipping with my sisters and brothers. And when the process, I get weak. And it's easy now for the enemy to attack me. Why? Because if I'm doing like Paul said, fail not to assemble themselves together. If I'm doing like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If I'm with my sisters and brothers, they can say, no, no, don't do that. That's the enemy there. They can start pleading the blood on the spot. Why? Because there's strength in numbers. Amen. There's strength in numbers. 
the mirror versus the window. You see, we don't like to look in the mirror. See, the mirror is important because it reflects exactly what is shown. No additives. Nothing can take away. In our Christian walk, we must use the mirror to reflect what we are showing others, not what we think. On the contrary, what is actually. See, most of us think that we're farther than what we really are. We, we, can, we can identify and pick out people's problems, but can't realize and rationalize our own problem. It, it, come on, somebody. You look in the mirror and you've been looking so long, you, you know you got a big bump on you. You can't put rouge and powder on that. It, it's still there. You know you got some spots. You know you got some marks, and you trying to hide it. Amen. You got some issues, but you can't neglect him. Why? Because it's there. You might not want to see him, but other folk can see him. And, and we're oftentimes like the window. See, the window is used to peer out of and notice what is on the outside of our environment. So many times we use this to access others and their behavior. We'll look in the mirror, but we look outside. We'll find what's wrong with somebody else. We'll talk about issues that somebody else has had without realizing and remembering the reflection that we saw when we stood in the mirror. Sometimes you got to say, stop looking out the window and start staring in the mirror. Let me get me together first before I go after somebody else. Amen. Help me to do what's right for myself so I can be right for somebody else. Amen. Third point is repent. When we decide that we are incapable or not able to carry out what God has for us to do, we are telling him that he did not do a good enough job creating. God's creation is good. In fact, they are very good. Genesis 1 and 31. We are made in his image and in likeness. Yes, 1 and 27. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms 139 and 14. Amen. We have to realize that God doesn't make mistakes. I don't care what other folks don't see. I don't care what other people don't validate. God knows exactly what he's doing when he called you and I. I don't need your, you to prove who I am. God has already validated me. You don't need somebody else to tell you you're doing a good job. Come on, somebody. We in line waiting for other folk to lift us. You got to learn sometime to hear from the Lord and trust in what he says. Develop a plan to address barriers. Well, how to avoid keeping my barriers. I got to get a plan together. And at first, I need to do some counseling. You see, some of us need to be counseled. We carry some deep-seated issues. And it didn't come since we came into the church. It was there before we got into the church. Amen. And we haven't really fully, amen, we haven't really fully dealt with those issues that we had before we got in the church. And what tends to happen when you don't deal with it, it'll show itself. Now, it's not outside the church, it's showing itself in the church. So sometimes we have to have counseling. Another thing I like to suggest is a prayer strategy. See, when you pray right, you can't pray wrong. Prayer will keep you from sin, and sin to keep you from praying. A amen? So we have to have a prayer strategy. We just can't, you know, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord in my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord in my soul. That, no, no. I'm doing talking like Peter when he went on, walked on the water and started sinking. He said, Lord, save me. Some of us got to ask God to save us, not from Sister Mooch or Brother Longhead. Save me from myself. Paul said, oh, man, that I am. When I went to do good, evil was there. Come on, talk back to me. Hey, man, your intentions might be wonderful, but there's a dead cat on the line. And you got to pray to show you who you really are. I need you to show me. I need you to help me, Lord. I'm tired of faking it until I make it. I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of running up and down the aisle, speaking in some kind of tongue, and know I'm not right well on the inside. God, it's more than a hook in a book. It's a lifestyle. It's an attitude. God, help us in this house. 
Lord, help us tonight. Self-assessment. We've got to look at ourselves and write down all of my mistakes. Quit looking at somebody else. Look and look in the mirror and see your mistakes. See the areas where you need some help at. See where you're weak at. Don't come on, somebody. Don't pretend that you're better than what you are. After a while, you're going to start believing a lie. And the Bible said a liar won't tarry. You, this thing in this journey, you can't fake it until you make it. Because the real you going to come out. See, that what, that's what pressure does. Pressure presents the real person. When you put somebody under pressure, and you're going to notice, you're going to see. You know that old expression, when people tell you who they are, believe them. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, when people tell you who they are, believe them. Amen. Yeah. And you've got to have some self-assessments. Be honest and be real with yourself. Be true. I hear that Socrates said, to thy own self, be true. To your own self, be true. You know, I, I have a mantra. It takes six months to mind my own business. It takes six months to leave other folk business alone. That's my year. I don't have time to worry what they're doing down the street around the corner. Even across the street. I don't have time. I just need to worry about what's going on in my house. What's going on in my world. I need to focus not on the other folk. I need to focus on myself. Because, God, I got to say, Lord, listen, I know, God, I ain't perfect because there's only been one perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. And you told me to mark the perfect man. And I know I'm not, in the per I'm not, I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. Amen. God, there's some problems I still possess while I'm in Christ Jesus. That's why we got to continue to practice sanctification. We got to be set aside for the best of use. God needs to cleanse us up. God needs to wash us over. I hear, I hear the prophet say, purge me with his up. Make me white as clean me on the inside. You, you know what David prays, Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to your tender mercy. Blot out. Come on, we got some transgression. We're not doing everything that God told us to do. We haven't handled the things that God has given to us. We have not been the best steward that God has declared unto us. We are not being and doing what God called us to do. Why? There's a sins of omission. There's sins of commission. We need to start looking at ourselves and say, God, I need your help. Holy bless the holy name. You know, back in the church when, you know, you know, Sunday nights, we used to have tearing service. What the special service every time we came to church, we were subject to have tearing service. Come on Tuesday night, praying Babel band. Come Friday night instruction. Amen. We were subject to break out, amen, in a tearing service. Amen. You know, and sometimes you we, we wasn't always right, amen, to be leading somebody where we really wasn't. Lord have mercy. You know, sometimes when you look for the leaders to come, they're not in a good condition to come and lead out. You, you, you see, that's why the old folk used to teach us that you ought to live as if the Lord is coming at any moment. That's when the mother, mother Dawson, they used to tell us, even so come Lord Jesus. They would say, Saints, I'll see you next Wednesday if it's the Lord's will. Amen. They knew that they taught within us that we had to live right. Every opportunity that we have, amen, you live right, not just week by week, but one day at a time. And I used to the whole saying, say, hey, I thank God for being saved. And no evil have I done. Lord, have me. We got to commit to address the areas of concern. You know your problems. You know your weakness. You've got to commit to address these issues. Don't ignore them. Do not act like they do not exist. Beloved, they exist, and they're preventing you from being what God wants you to be. Been in church all this, low these many years. Still can't pray a coal off of anybody. Whew. Lord have mercy. And we can talk about some of the best service you've seen, some of the best messages you heard. You can talk about it. Amen. But you can't really relate to it. Because you were standing on the outside looking in. Because when you hear those kinds of teaching and preaching, your life ought to change. Amen. You can't be under the power of the Holy Spirit and continue to do what you've been doing. 
after a while, it looked like something ought to learn how to develop healthy relationship. Yeah, this is what we need to do. I'm about to close. We have to learn how to develop healthy relationships. Aren't you tired of unhealthy relationships? And beloved, let me help you. This presentation for the tonight and last night does not just work in the church. It'll work in your home. Yeah, it'll work in your home. You see, the problem is when the individual is jacked up and when the individual is buried and the family is jacked up, now the church becomes jacked up. Then community becomes jacked up. The state becomes jacked The nation becomes jacked up. Why? Because the individual is jacked up. Because the family is jacked up. And your family come to church and the church becomes jacked up. Amen. Somewhere we got to get it right. Somewhere we got to get this thing the way that God wanted it to be. So we ought to get tired of dealing with unhealthy relationships. Somebody got to be big enough to say, listen, sister, listen, you ain't spoke to me in three weeks and I ain't spoke to you. Let me be honest with you. I want to first of all apologize. If I have done anything, if I have hurt you in any way, come on, somebody. Let's apologize. Even you may be right. You know, I teach at the church, hey, amen, sometimes you can be right, but you don't have to be right. They can be wrong as all outdoors. But because they're wrong, don't make you be wrong with them. You do what's right and say, sister, I want to apologize. I'm sorry. And when you apologize, you don't give a reason why you behave that way. Because now you justify and you erase your apology. Well, the reason I was doing it because I saw you, it looked like you were rolling your eyes at me. It doesn't mean she would roll her eyes. Maybe she'd roll her eyes behind somebody else. But if you wasn't looking over there and looking where you're supposed to be looking, you wouldn't see the eyes roll. Amen. When we come to church, you ought to look this way. And when you look this way, it's hard to look that way. Amen. And I don't like to sit by people who pss, 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 while church is going on. Mm -mm. I don't tell them to get up. I'll just move. And they say, well, why you move? I say, because you was pss, pss, pss. I didn't come to church pss, pss, pss. I come to hear a word from the Lord. I can't go home the way I came. My soul need a blessing from the Lord. And I don't need nobody be pss, 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 and ain't talking about nothing. Ain't talking about nothing. You're right. We let folk distract us right out of the spirit. Tapping us. Lord trying to deal in us. They tapping us. Move. Move, <sighs> move out your way. Learn, we ought to learn how to develop a healthy relationship. Amen. What, what should we do? What should we do, Pastor Matt? We need to start spending time with the others. I go back to that. I go back to that. Amen. Family members, we argue and we fight. Family members. But we family at the end of the day. We still share the same blood. We might have our differences. But at the end of the day, we still family. And that's how it should be in the church. The church ought to be designed to be a family. Amen. I, I said last night, you know, you can get hurt in the church, but you can leave the church, but get hurt on the job, you won't leave your job. You coming back the next day. You coming. You get hurt in the church and you walk away from God. God didn't hurt you. So what, Sister Moochie heard it? Pray for her. You don't know what she's going through. Amen. And I'm not here to judge anybody. You don't know what she's going through. You don't know what I'm going through. We all going through. It's not the fact that we're going through. It's how do we respond when we're going through. How do we handle when we're going through. That determines and that speaks loud. I didn't know, child, girl, I didn't know you was going through it. Every time I saw you, you had a praise on you in your mouth. Child, I didn't know you was going through like that. I saw you come in the chair, lifting and magnifying the name of Jesus. I'm a believer. You don't have to look like what you're going through. And you ain't got to tell everybody you're going through. Spend time with one another. 
And then what the church needs to do, we need to have some team building strategies. Sometimes, amen, and beyond on Bible studies, we need to get together and have team building strategy. Talk about what it means to be a team. Amen. Fortune 500s, amen, of uh, companies that's doing well. They send their supervisors, their foremans, their execs to different places to learn how to operate on a team concept. You would think we would do it because we serve the same God. Well, what the prophet said, have we not one God? Have not one God created us? So why do we deal so treacherously every man against his brother? And we say we got the same father. And we miss one another. You know, Pastor, I believe we have to teach people. I believe we have to teach people. I know we assume that a people should know. Amen. Let's get rid of the assumption. Let's make it plain and just go back and teach people. As a child, I remember playing kickball and baseball and softball. And when we go to the field, amen, we just wanted to play. But the person who was in charge would, first of all, set the rules. Hey man, first set the rules. Because you might not play the way I play. Because three strikes and you out. You, you might not play that way. You might swing until they hit the ball. So what we need to do, we need to set the rules first. So we need to do some team building strategy. Then we need to have what I like to call an open and a weekly line of communication. Yeah, I know it sounds childlike, but sometimes you need to appoint people and say this. I want you to check on Brother Longhead this week. I want you to just call and see how they're doing. That's all. Say, so this is Sister Moochie, Brother Longhead. Just want to see how you're doing. All right. God bless you. See you Sunday. You ain't got to get the 411911. Amen. We need to start learning how to speak to one another. We have a rule in our church. If you come within 10 feet of a person, you ought to speak. And the sad that you come to church, walk right by somebody and don't say nothing. Lord, have mercy. Won't say nothing, but just walk right by her. And then get in the car and say, child, she ain't said nothing to me, and I ain't said nothing to her. Amen. You still got your wall up. Amen. She seen me first, but you saw her. Two wrong don't make a right. When I walk up and say, sister, sister Mucci, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I should have said something. Even if she don't say something, I want to be right. The old church used to say, I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be here. And I ain't going to let nobody separate me from the king. Work with Another thing we need to work on social skills. How to speak. How to be courteous. How to say thank you. How to say pardon me. How to say excuse me. Pardon me. I help you. Amen. Yeah. We need to go back. Certain services and where I pastor at, we take the time out and we have these kinds of sessions. And the Bible is a beautiful thing, but ain't going to do it no good if you don't know how to treat one another. Amen. We have people walking up down the corridor or right in the middle of the aisle and, and we want to see if they're going to speak or not. Amen. We, we have role playing. When people, you know, got to get in, you sitting on the very end by the aisle and they trying to get in, you got to get up. Sometimes you don't even want to get up. Child can't even get in. You don't even want to. You know if you're sitting on the end, somebody's coming. If you don't want to move. We have to learn some social skills. And just because you 900 years old don't mean that you have a right to be dismissive. Amen. I'm old. I do what I want. No, no. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. We need to work on our social skills. Speak. How you doing this morning? I ain't sleep with you last night. How you doing this morning? God bless you. Glad to have you. Well, our pastor, we have these sessions and we say to the membership at the first five minutes when church is over with, when there's a visitor, we don't even call them a visitors. We don't even call them a guest. We call them gifts because they're gifts to the ministry. God, I wish I had help in here. And we tell them at the first five minutes, amen, start speaking to them. 
You see somebody speaking, and all you saying, God bless you, thank God for coming, and you move. So the next person can say the same thing. People will come back to your church when it feels like it's a friendly place. People will come back to the church when it feels like it's a friendly place. Our churches feel like an ice, I, Lord have mercy, feel like a, come on God, help me tonight. Let me behave myself. Feel like we in a deep freeze. Church feel like so cold. You wonder why I come back. Because nobody said anything to the gifts. Nobody, nobody said, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Nobody said, come again. Amen. And then sometimes the wrong person go to them. The wrong person. Where you from? Where you live at? How long you been over there? How many kids you got? Do you got a job? That's none of your business. You can't scale the fish until you catch them. We need to work on some skills. Oh, God. Let me move on. Active and reflective listening. We're hearing, but we're not listening. I got to hurry now. We're hearing. We're hearing, but we're not listening. <laughs> active listening. Come on, you got to be active and reflective. In your, what do you mean active? Listen to what they say. Every word. Listen to them. Not only are you listening actively, but you reflect. You can mean what it means. What it means? It means this. You can tell them what they told you in your own words. That's when you know people are actually listening. When they can give it back to you, just like you gave it to them in their own words. Amen. And most of us are hearing and we're not listening. Child, I heard some of it. I don't know what she was talking about. Amen. And you know, I've learned this, you know, in discussion and conversation, it takes two to communicate. Sometimes we so busy waiting so we can jump in like we're playing jump rope. We can't rope. We can't wait till we get our turn. They haven't even finished what they were trying to say. But we don't have enough patience, enough social skills to let them do what. See, everybody's not like you. Everybody's not quick on the draw. Some people are a little slow. Some people process a little slower than you do. And sometimes because they're a little slower, we take advantage of other people. <sighs> yeah, we take advantage with other people. Let me move on. Coping with your emotions. That's the emotions that we have, that we need to deal with. Seriously. We'll fly off the handle real quick. Real quick. It did, and it don't take much at all. We come in at uh, we come here on 109 and the limit is 110. We already close to 110. Nobody's done anything but we just so short and if he don't get finished preaching I'm going to get up and walk out of here. When I tell him elder pastor, I used to tell him you couldn't go to Jesus church cuz he preached Matthew 5, 6 and 7 in one setting. He preached so that the disciples said, Lord, we need to send these folk home because they ain't got nothing to eat. You get a preacher 30, 35 minutes, and if he ain't done in 37 minutes, you're going to let him know. You can go to the mall and spend hours at the mall. You can go to the beauty shop and the barber shop and spend hours. You got your hair cut, you got your hair combed, and you still there talking because they're just talking. You just want to know what's going on. But when it comes to church, when it comes to church, you got God on a clock. We got some emotions that we need to deal with. Amen. You know, I like Mother Dodson. I like the old convention oven. You have to preheat it. Sometimes 30 and 45 minutes before you put your stuff in the oven. You just stick it in there and turn 350 or 450. You preheated it. What do you say, Pastor? By the time it got in there, it was on. See, and I know y'all like that microwave. You know, you just stick it in. It can be frozen. In five minutes, you got something. Have you ever, maybe it just me, happened to me, I had a pot pie, and I stuck it in the microwave, and I did what it said, do I? It was in there about seven, eight minutes. I had it on high, and the edge was brown. When I took it out, I put my fork in the middle. And it was just as ice. But, but the edge 
was brown. Some of y'all edges are but your middle is cold. And sometimes you got to remove it from the microwave and put it in the conventional oven and pre. Now, you know, when you do it in the conventional oven, when you go through the process, you can tell just by clicking the light on in the oven, you'll see the juice running. Now, you know, it's ready. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I, I, I grew up mothers when the saints, the older people used to drink coffee. They had a cup and a saucer. Am I talking to somebody? I know y'all Starbucks people. I know y'all fast Dunkin' Donut drinkers. I, I personally don't drink coffee, but hey man, I, I grew up when they had a sauce, a saucer in a cup. And I did not I didn't understand why they would pour the coffee and then let it run over. I thought that didn't make sense to me. I thought they were just getting rid of the top and then it didn't make sense. When they got finished drinking from their cup, they would grab the saucer. And they will catch the leftovers. God, we some of us need to have a salsa. We need to, so when we get mixed, fixed, drinking from our cup, we need to get to salsa. Oh, bless his name. Yeah, we need to deal with our emotions. Bless his name. I got some jacked up feelings. And I came this way. Ain't nobody in church did nothing to me. I was jacked up before I came here. I need God to deliver me. I'm tired of coming to church with a goose pimple experience, feeling good on the outside, but nothing changing on the inside. And don't nobody know what you go through when you go home. Or you ought to be tired of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You ought to come on, somebody. Tired of living saved on Sunday, unsaved on Monday, unsaved on Tuesday. You ought to be tired. God, I need you to deliver me from the inside out. Till from the inside out. Come on from the inside out. You remember them prayer services when the saints said amen, they were still, the glory was still in the house. The haze was still in the house. People wouldn't even leave. Folks still speaking in tongue. Folks still under the spirit. Well, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Had to drive the folk home, knock on the door, and had to explain to them, they, these are not drunken as ye suppose. But this is that. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. Lord Jesus, let me close. Let me close. Above all, somebody say above all, trust God. That's what we got to do. We got to trust God. Above all, we got to trust God. That's what we got to do. Bless his name. As I close, as I close this presentation, <laughs> What God desires. What is it that God wants from us? Amen. First and foremost, I need to deal with me first before I deal with us. I told you the mirror and the window. We built up walls, but we can't see our walls. But we can see other walls. My, my neighbor has a dog, a nice-sized dog, and he had one of those invincible fence. It's an invincible fence, and he has a collar around his neck. And uh, once he crosses or get near that line, he gets a notification. He gets a notification. Some people call it a shock. But he gets a wake-up call that he's gone far as he needs to go. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some of us need some fences. Because we've gone too far. Amen. We need to stay within our parameters. Amen. We, we need to stay within the area where God has for us. Amen. Some of us cannot wander beyond where God has broadened or where God has limited us. We need to stay with God that has ordained and instructed us and we'll be in safekeeping. So what is it that God desires? Well, God desires unity, partnership, and not independence. He wants unity, 
partnership, not independence. Scripture says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. For how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three-four cord is not quickly broken. The devil wants us to be independent. God wants us to be interdependent upon him. There's power in numbers. It's the work of the enemy when you come to church and feel like you will have to speak to nobody. You don't have to be bothered with nobody. You just think that you come to church, but that's not what God ordained. That's not what God wants. That's isolation. That's what the devil wants to do. We can be in the midst of a full house and still feel like we by ourselves. Amen. And I don't want nobody in my vicinity to walk out here feel like nobody has said anything to them. I don't care what position you have, what paper you carry, what title you have, what parking lot spot you got. That doesn't matter. We ought to be kind to one another. Thank you for coming. Appreciate you coming. I know you was busy, but thank God that you showed up. People need to have, people need to hear from us. They need to hear from somebody else. We don't know people in the press. We don't know what they're going through. They didn't even go home. They just came here anyway. They needed to be rewarded. I'm so glad you made it. Child, don't worry about what you got on. We're just glad to have you. Yeah. What else does God want? God desires engagement, not isolation. Neither. John 17, 20 through 23, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through the word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Come on, somebody. The world need to come to the church. The church should be the model for the world, how to treat one another. Amen. Shouldn't have to go down to the city hall. Shouldn't have to go to the White House looking for behavior. We ought to be able to simplify it right in the house of God. You say you love God. How you love God who you've never seen and hate your brother who you see daily? How you going to do that? God designs engagement. It's about not spark. It's not just spectation. It's about participation. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Glad when we go back to the time where folk, you know, we used to have testimony service. And we used to have popcorn testimony service. You ain't had to call nobody. People just jump up. Come on, somebody. I just praise God for. Listen, if nothing more than I'm saved. Sanctified. Feel with the Holy Ghost. With a mighty burning fire. Pray my strength. Somebody else had a testimony. Been saved all day. No evil. Come on, somebody. Now you got to have a leader. Is there another one? Is there one? You got to sing seven songs to get one testimony. God desires cooperation. 
not competition. 1 Corinthians 3, 4 through 8, for a while one said, I am a Paul, and another, I am Apollos. Are ye not cardinal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that waters, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planted, whoo, I feel something. And he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. God desires cooperation and not competition. Look at your person next to you and say, we're on the same team. <laughs> Come on again and say, we're on the same team. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you as our prayer. I pray. I pray. I pray to God and that you got something from these last two days. Breaking down your erected walls. Amen. I pray that you would take this information, apply it, practice it, go over it again. Amen. Go through it with your church. Amen. And you'll see it deal still works. God bless you. Thank you for allowing us to come. We now will surrender ourselves into the hand of our own superintendent, Lonry Anamusi. Let's say amen as he come. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the superintendent tonight. Come on. Certainly, we thank God for all of his blessings. And as, as God has given us the grace to enjoy these two nights of wonderful, powerful word from the Lord. I thank God that he allowed God to impact in him so that we can be blessed tonight. And I certainly thank him for those two nights that he has stretched that he has traveled all the way from Warren, Ohio, just to come and do the will and the work of the Lord. Why don't we just give it to him one more time? Let's say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Doctor, I always say to him, and he doesn't like me saying this, I always say to him, he is the only doctor in the house. Amen. Amen. Um, hospitality, please come. 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 Sister Alicia, you can get ready too. on the behalf of my superintendent of the headquarters on the Moosey and the hospitality department, we would like to present you with this basket and we hope you do enjoy it. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And one more thing before you go, we have something for you. We have something for him. We have something for you, so don't leave until you see me. I know you are. I know you have to go, but just give me another five minutes, and I will take. I won't. I won't hold you any longer. Thank you, doctor. The only doctor. So listen, listen. We are here now. We are here now, and like we did last night, this is not. It is not. It's a free will offering. So uh, I'm. I'm going to call Brother Lanre. Come and help Sister Alicia, and let's just do this offering quickly. It's not the main offering. This is just kind of like an expense free will offering. Express uh, expense free will offering.
And I'm going to, while we are getting prepared, I'm just going to quickly pray. Father, I thank you for the giver tonight. I pray that you increase them hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's come and give. Let's come and give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brother Landry will walk the aisle. And if you can walk, he will walk the aisle just for you. Tonight is the women's night of our district. Amen. It is the women's night of our district and we are right at the brink of time. That's why I told my friend to keep going because I need him to help cover the space. There is also, while we're doing that, while we're doing that, there is also something that uh, some of the officers will come to you and give you. Please oblige them in the next Oblige them in the next two minutes and let them um, help them be able to do the things that they must do to get to a wedding. Is what we have planned already. We have planned a big surprise every night. Last night, some people were blessed. Amen. I said some people were blessed. I said some people were blessed. Amen. And we want to do the exact same thing tonight and tomorrow night. And I'm going to be getting out of the way while I give, while we use the next 10 minutes to kind of get ourselves ready for the main service. You know what you're supposed to be doing at that point. It's going to be in the women's hands. And you're not going to hear from me again until later tonight. Amen? Amen. So relax and enjoy this moment of interlude. Praise God.
if anybody's on the other side over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give him some praise. Just give him some praise. Just give him some praise. Hallelujah. He's been too good to us not to give him some praise. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all, but I was glad when they said unto me, Hallelujah. The world wasn't treating me right. Hallelujah. But I was glad when they said unto me, Hallelujah. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to glorify him. We come to lift him up. Hallelujah. We come to let his name be great. Hallelujah in all the earth. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, I will exalt his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will lift my hands in the sanctuary and I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify the name of the Lord. Glorify. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify. Glorify his name, we come to glorify, glorify, we come to glorify his name, we come to glorify his name, we come to glorify the name of the Lord, Lord. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify his name. We come to glorify. Come on in. Help me to. Help me to. Help me to. Help me to glorify. The name of the Lord, Lord, come on in, come on in, come on in, by his name, come on in, glorify name of the Lord, glorify his name. He's worthy, glorify his name. he's worthy, glorify his name. he's worthy. Glorify his name, glorify the name of the Lord, glorify his name, come on in, come on in, come on in, glorify his name, come on in, glorify the name of the Lord, glorify his name, help me too. Help me to help me to help me to glorify the name Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Yes. Glorify his name. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, give him some glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, wonderful Savior. We come to glorify him and we come to give him praise. At this time, we're going to have our praise and worship team to come. At this time, we're going to have our praise and worship team to come and to lead us into our praise and worship. And we're just going to ask that everyone just bring their minds in. Hallelujah. To receive what the Lord has for them. Hallelujah.
I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. Hallelujah. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. My heart, yes. My mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Yeah. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I lift my hands with full adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love. I worship and adore you, just want 
to tell you, Lord, I love you more than Jesus, wonderful Savior, hallelujah. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Ha! Ah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. It said he hung his head for me, he died. Hallelujah. That's love. Hallelujah. We ought to show him that we love him on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave me the other day, in spite of my blind moment, I can still see. Oh, God. In spite of a blind moment, I can still see. Hallelujah. When things seem to be going in another direction, God, yes, give us sight to see. At this time, hallelujah, we're going to ask that missionary Lane Woods come and give us our invocation. Hallelujah. And after missionary Woods, we're going to ask that uh, Beverly Battle will come. 
I'm sorry, uh, Evangelist Georgia White will come with the Old Testament and Evangelist Missionary Carrie Woods will come with the New Testament in that order. She said, him high and stretched him wide. For me, he died. That's love. That's love. We're going to come and go to the altar, to that one who loved us so much, to that one who shed his blood for us, to that one who died for our sins, to the King of kings and Lord of Lord, to the Holy One of Israel. We're going to go to him and say, thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for mindful of us, oh God. Thank you for bringing us into your marvelous life. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for saving me from my sins, oh God. Thank you for sending wonderful people in my life who has shown me the way, who has taught me about holiness, who has loved me enough till I know how to walk up right before them, till I know how to talk right before them. We come to say thank you this morning. We come to say we appreciate you, Lord. We love you, oh God. You are great God. And we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for bringing our pastor and first lady and his family safely across the way, Lord. We thank you for comforting them in their grief, oh God. We thank you, Lord. Nobody can comfort us like you can, oh God. Nobody can keep us like you can, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you and we appreciate. We're so grateful to have our state mother here and our district missionary, Barbara, here. I'm so glad to see you. Love you. I love you, uh, saints. And we got to love one another. If you had been in the, uh, the meeting this morning, he told us we need unity. Unity means we need to love each other. We can love somebody out of their situation. We can love somebody till they turn from their sins. We need to love like Jesus loved us. He loved us past our faults, right on into our, our deliverance, oh God. And I thank you right now, because he's a great God. He's a merciful and a kind God. And we just say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The psalmist said in 34 Psalms, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. I will bless him at all times, yes. and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh! Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let's exalt it together. Let us exalt his name together. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. from Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answered and said unto him, them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said unto, to say come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, 
believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your father also which is in him may forgive you your trespasses. Amen. This is the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our official remarks by evangelist missionary Barbara Brown. Thank you. I love your song. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, come, let's go into the house. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, let us go to the house. Oh, I was happy when they said unto me, So happy! I was happy when they said unto me, I was so happy! I was happy when they said unto me, Oh, let us go to the house. Oh, yes, I was glad when they said, tonight oh god is good and i thank god for, oh god oh god thank you jesus oh, for me to be here tonight i wanted to come on last night but i didn't get a ride my daughter bless her heart thank god for just blessing us you took time all of you out of your busy schedule 
to just to be here and to worship the Lord. Oh God, and we want to praise his name and give him all the glory because it all belongs to him. Amen. Yes, I want to give honor to Headquarters District Superintendent Lon Rayana Musi. Yes, yes. I'd like to give honor to our First Lady, bless her heart, Evangelist Carla Anamusi. And we're yet praying for you. Ohio South Jurisdictional Secretary Pastor Dwight Brandon. God bless you as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And to our very own, our very own supervisor. God bless you. Mother Renee Brandon, I love you so much. I love you and I thank you for your prayers. God is good. Yes, and to our district missionary, Evangelist Georgia White. Let's say amen for her. Yes, yes. To all the missionaries, all the missionaries, the deacons, saints, and friends. And to our church mother, Mother LaBertha Dawson. And to each of you. Yes, so glad, so glad, so glad you took time to come out and worship with us. God bless you. Pray my strength in the Lord that I be the daughter that he's calling for. But before I say that, I want to say special thanks to my daughter, Jennifer Lashery. Bless her heart. She's been with me. She's been my right hand. Oh, God. Every night, every day, she's been there. She's been there for me. I'm the mother of seven. I'm the mother of seven. The grandmother of 19 and five great-grandchildren. But I thank God for my firstborn, Jennifer. Bless her heart. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. God bless you all. Pray my strength in the Lord that I be the daughter that he's calling for this last of evil days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the sign that our God is a healer. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice. Hallelujah. I'm, she's rejoicing over her healing on today. Hallelujah. We ought to rejoice with her on today. Oh. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody don't get that chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But God has given her a chance. And she, we ought to praise him for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I am a Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, oh God. I give him praise today. I give him honor today. Hallelujah. My family and I left at 5 o'clock this morning, mother, on our way to Detroit to bury my oldest brother. But Pastor Superintendent Anna Moosey said, I got to be back. I said, I got to be back, too, because the word said, let it. I got a praise on the inside because they say we ought to be rejoicing in the death of one of our saints. Hallelujah. I'm not, I'm not sad about it because he died in Christ. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not sad. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice. I shall rejoice. I shall rejoice. Woo. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. At this time, hallelujah. Put your hands together all over the building as we have remarks from administrative assistant Dwight Brandon. Is there anyone in here that's glad for Jesus Christ? Yeah. Praise the Lord. We thank God the Father for his son, Jesus Christ, and for blessing us with safe passage over the highways on tonight. And we're glad to be here tonight in the uh, headquarters district meeting. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God bless. God bless the uh, leader of this district, Superintendent Anamusi. Amen. God bless Pastor David Henderson. Yeah. God bless you. Haven't seen him in quite a while. Happy to see him tonight. Pastor Tony Smith. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless my companion, my wife, the first lady of the district and all of the missionaries, mothers and blessed people of the Lord of this great district. We thank God. Amen. For blessing us to be here. But most of all, I thank God for his presence in his house on tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His presence is certainly here. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to ask that our praise team will come back and render us another selection. Put your hands together for them as they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, don't stop praising the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. If it had not been for God, you wouldn't be here today. So bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness I am That you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful.
my heart flowing from my heart flowing from my heart flowing from my heart flowing from my heart are the issues of are the of my heart is gratefulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grateful, 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 It's bowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They were all in here on last week's Sunday, worshiping in rehearsal. And the spirit of the Lord swept through this place. All the adults was on the other side. It was just the young people on this side. The Holy Ghost swept through this place and saved them all. Huh? Glory to God. Saved them all. Every last one of them. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Now they can worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He's a God that saves. Hallelujah. He's a God that delivers. And he's a God that sets free. Hallelujah. At this time, if you would, all over this building, put your hands together for the greatest superintendent that I know and that you know, the headquarters superintendent, our superintendent, Superintendent Lonray Onamusi. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I certainly give glory to God who is the head of my life, who continues to strengthen me in all of my life. Certainly, I give honor to our bishop, Bishop Brandon Porter, for being the man of God that he is and how he has led us through this transition and still leading us through this transition with hope that what we have already desired and already seen is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am grateful tonight to see our mother, our saintly mother with us tonight. Our one and only, my darling. <laughs> Supervisor Renee Brandon. And certainly I give honor to the administrative assistant, the white Brandon. You know, you, you guys don't understand what it means for us husband. Even though we are not talked about or celebrated as much as we want to be celebrated, but we do a whole lot of work behind the scene. Administrative assistant Brandon brings mother this way every time she is coming this way. So if we can just give him the greatest honor in the house and just honor him tonight and just say thank you thank you for bringing mother to us certainly i thank god for pastor tony smith new birth church of god in christ he's been working so hard and finally tonight, he said to me, he said, I will be there tonight. And I thank God for him, for joining us tonight and being a part of this great district. Also, I want to thank God. I know you are excited. I am most excited to have my chairman with me in the house. Yeah. Chairman David Anderson. Certainly, I give God the glory for his life, for his health, and for his strength. Still able to drive a long way from Warren to Cleveland just to be with us. And also to all of the district missionaries in the house. I don't want to miss nobody because then I get in trouble. All of the missionaries in the house. I give glory and honor to you. all of the first ladies in the house. I give honor to you. All the mothers in the house. I give honor to you. And certainly I want to give honor to my wife. You know, it's amazing, and, and, and this is not planned because it just came to my mind. The first time she went home with me, she traveled for the first time. She traveled to Nigeria with me. We were planning to have a great time. But right in the middle of the vacation, our oldest sister died. I don't think it was even three days we got the news that she was gone. We did everything to get her back on flight, back for the funeral. We could not do it. She was not there when she was buried. Just a couple of years ago, another sister passed. She moved from Chicago to come over to Cleveland and start a new beginning. That same night she moved in with us. She went to bed, woke up in the middle of the night, said, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And that was the last we heard about of her. But just last week, Saturday, Another of a sibling went home to glory. But this time it was different. This time, there was something about this period that made both me and her felt real good. In fact, her, because I thought she was going to just fall apart. And I was prepared for it. 
but God. But God. God prepared not just only her, God prepared me for such a time as this. Because prior to his passing away, he picked up the phone in a sick bed, dying, and called every single person that he might have thought he offended. And asked each and every one of us, would you please forgive me? And I believe after he completed his task, God said it's time to come home. But God will not bring him home until he confessed him as his Lord and Savior. See, there's something about a change. When a change happens in you, it changes your perception. It changes your mind. It changes your ways. It changes your thoughts. It changes everything. So I want to honor this woman of God. I want to honor her tonight. Because she has been a woman of integrity. A woman that has stood by me. Because when I said to her, I said, I have to be back tonight. I have a work to do. So wherever you go, I go with you. Stand first, lady. I love you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is Women's Night. And we're here to hear our mother. Yes. I want to give her ample time to speak to our hearts. Yes. To speak to our spirit. I'm going to sit back and have the first lady come and introduce her. And after, we're going to come back because we have some goodies for you. If you don't believe me, ask the folks that was here last night. Yes. Just ask them. What you saw last night... It's just a little bit. Hallelujah. You know how they say it? From strength to strength. <laughs> That's what it's going to be from glory to glory. Just pay attention. Don't lose what you got in your hand. Because that's your ticket. To glory back in the hands of our first lady let's say amen for her amen. Amen. hallelujah this task that i have on my hands right now i am honored to stand before god's people and introduce this great woman of god i believe that she is a woman of faith i believe she is a great woman of prayer I believe that she is an extraordinary servant in the kingdom of God. I believe that she serves with her whole heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit. I believe she has a love for God's people, not only just the women, but for God's people. And for such a time as this, God has given us a woman after his own heart. I believe that God has been speaking to her and dealing with her for tonight, for his people, for his women, for us to go to our next level in God. So if you would, once again, put your hands together for the greatest supervisor I know and that you know, the supervisor of women of the Ohio Southern jurisdiction and the interim district missionary of the headquarters district, Supervisor Renee Brandon. Hallelujah. Thank you. And my friend.
thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Woo, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit, Lord. Thank you for your blessing for bringing us over the entire station. Thank you for all who are here. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us. Lord, I ask that you have your way in me. Have your way in the service, Lord. Ooh, let your spirit reign in this place. Bind the enemy and cast him out. Cast him out right now in the name of Jesus. He don't belong here. <laughs> Satan, you don't belong here. Get on up out of here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I ask that you word my mouth. Have your way in me, Lord. Renee, sit down and you rise up. Stand up in me, Lord. Stretch out in me, Lord. Use me as never before. <laughs> I decrease while you increase, Lord. In the name of Jesus, no longer I, but it's you that lives in me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Is God good? No, 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 no. I mean, is God really good? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I give honor to the Lord. <laughs> to Superintendent Anamusi. To 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 uh, Elder Barnes. Elder, I don't know where Barnes came from. Forgive me. Forgive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor Henderson. Pastor Smith and my baby, my sugar, my pastor, <laughs> Missionary White say that's yours. Talk about him, and, and I do, I do. I thank God for baby. I thank God for you. I love you dearly. I thank God because you know He had said, "No, no, no, I will take you." And I'm not talking about today. I was saying, well, I can, I can, no, no, no. He just shut me down automatically. No, I'm going to take you. Where you got to go, I will take you. I said, I said, okay, baby. <laughs> I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I'm in good hands with Dwight Brandon. Yeah, not all state, but with him. I'm not going to be before you long. That's what you pray for me. Um, I just want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you. Um, and, and I honor all of you that's here too. District missionaries, God bless you. I love you dearly. Y'all are my family. Yes, yes. We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Brother Jonathan. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love you, Brother Jonathan. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love you, Jonathan. We're going to keep praying for Jonathan. Yes, yes, because we love him. My sister here, I always forget your name. Tia, I love you, sis. <laughs> ah, I'm, gonna be bef I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be before you long. We're going to start in, um, oh, my God, what happened to my, okay, Mark. Mark the eighth chapter. Y'all praying for me? Yes. Mark 8, 22 through 25, and 1 Kings 18, 41 through 46. And he cometh to Bethsaida, Bethsaida, and he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring, I'm sorry, right, everybody stand. And they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had so, he spit on his eyes, and put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw up. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and said, and, and was restored. He was restored. 
and saw every man clearly. First Kings 18, 41 to 46. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up. And say unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jez Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was, was, a, was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The word of the Lord is blessed. Just want to talk a little bit about this, these stories here. The first one, they brought somebody to Jesus. He was blind. And they asked him to heal his, heal his eyes. So Jesus took him by the hand, took him out of the town. But when he, when he spit on his eyes and prayed, he asked him, what do you see? What do you see now? In other words, um, well, I, I can't see real good, but I can see. But I see men, but they look like trees walking. So he said he did it again. He touched him again. Put his hands on his eyes. In other words, now what you see, he was restored. I see clearly now. Now, sometimes it don't come right away. Sometimes when we pray, it doesn't come instantly. Your healing may not come the first time. But are you going to keep praying or are you going to give up? Now, see, this was the second time and he saw clearly. He was restored at the second time. Now, the Lord restored me immediately. But it doesn't always work that way. So I'm just talking about prayer. Because the second one, it was Ahab. I mean, Elijah, I'm sorry. And Elijah, you know, was praying, praying for rain. It was a drought, three years, right, and six months. But it was a long time for no rain. And Ahab, Elijah, who she is, Satan? So Elijah, mm -hmm, he asked that his servant, after he's prayed, he said, go and look. His servant looked, look, look oh, over the sea there. What do you see? Servant said, nothing. He didn't stop praying. He just prayed some more. Second time, go look again. Servant said, nothing. Still nothing. Sometimes we pray and we don't see nothing. Sometimes we pray, we don't feel nothing. But are we going to stop praying? While he was praying, he told him to check again. He said, look again for the third time. And by the way, that's my subject, look again. He said, look again. He looked again. Wait a minute. Nothing for the third time, but Elijah didn't stop praying. So while we are waiting, we gotta keep praying. While we are asking God for whatever we're asking him for, keep on praying. Don't just sit down, keep on praying. For the fourth time, he said, look again. What do you see, my servant? Nothing. Fourth time. He prayed, though. 
He kept praying. I'm just, I'm just here to encourage somebody. We get discouraged real quick sometimes. I'm just saying. I've been praying for my child to be saved. Lord have mercy. When are you going to save him? You going to stop praying? No. No. I've been praying for a healing for so many years, seemed like. Lord, when are you going to heal me? You going to stop praying? No. As I wait on God, I'm going to pray. As I wait on my deliverance, I'm going to pray. As I wait on a change, I'm going to pray. We got to keep praying. We are praying people. We're supposed to be praying people. <laughs> That's how we get in contact with God. That's how we get in touch with God. That's how we talk to him through prayer, through prayer. Stop now. It's praying time. You know, it's a, it's a musical. Everybody's going. But it's a prayer time. Don't too many people want to go to prayer. Young folks, we need to pray. We need to pray. Old folks, we need to pray. Middle-aged people, we need to pray. Everybody needs to pray. And when you pray, have a sincere heart. Don't just, you know, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm gone. Lord, bless me. I'm gone. No, 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 no. Fervent prayer is what we need. You hear what I'm saying? Fervent prayer. Number five, he went five, fifth time. He said, servant, what did you see? He might have squinted his eyes. I'm, I'm trying to see something. Ah, but he went back to Elijah and said, nothing. Nothing. I see nothing. When you look for God to do something, you see nothing. Makes you might kind of feel discouraged a little bit. You might want to feel discouraged. Lord, they keep messing with me. When are you going to stop them? When are you going to make them leave me alone? But the more you pray, the stronger you'll get. In him, not in your own self, but in him. Lord, I can't find no job. Are you looking? Seriously, are you looking? Are you really, really looking? And are you praying? Why are you still in the bed? Get up. <laughs> so when you ask God, when you look for the God to do something for you, we got a part in it too. We have something we must do. We have to be prayerful. We have to be praying people. We have to depend on God, true enough. But he's not just going to drop it in your lap. Here it is. But what do we have to do? Somebody say pray, pray. Believe. believe, trust God, and keep on praying. Never stop praying. Sixth time, he said, what do you see, my servant? Look over to see. Look over. Okay, I'm looking again. I'm looking hard. But he went back to him. What did he say? Nothing. I still don't see nothing. But Elijah didn't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. <laughs> I love Jonathan. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Lord, I need deliverance. When I was sick with that fibromyalgia, let me tell you. I said, Lord, I said, God, you got to do something. You got to do something about this. I said, no, no, no. I said, Lord, you got to heal me. That's why I told him. But see, and when I told him that, immediately he healed me. Because I said, I can't lift my hands to you. I can't praise you like I want to. I can't praise you like I should. But sometimes we feeling all good. Everything is working. Your arms go up. Your arms don't go up. Your arms can go up. Your feet is fine. And we still won't praise God. We still won't raise our hands to him. Your voice is fine. We still won't say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just saying, everything is working fine. But... We still won't praise him. So when I told God, I can't praise you like this, 
and he healed me immediately. And I began to praise God. But let me tell you something else. It all came back. Everything came back. I said, well, this must be arthritis. And just as clear as I'm talking, I heard God say, no, it's the fibromyalgia. You're not doing what you're supposed to do anyway. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cried. I said, I don't want it, Lord. I don't want it. Listen, listen. I'm just being honest. Tell the truth. We got a sister in our church say, tell the, tr tell the truth and stay in the church. See, I say, tell the truth, stay in the church. So I'm telling the truth. I'm going to stay in the church. I'm going to stay in Jesus. But when it all came back on me, I said, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I was crying and carrying on. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it immediately was gone again. I said, take it back, Lord. It was gone again. So when you see me praising God, I got a right to praise him. I got a reason to praise him. You hear what I'm saying? And as I look back over my life, even before I got saved, his hand was on me. I know there's times I should have been dead. I know there's times I should have been in so much trouble. But God. And I thought about that. One day I was, oh, I was in prayer and I thought about, I just, my mind went back. And I was through then. I was just through. It was just me and him. Me and him that morning. I said, Lord, even when I wasn't thinking about you, you had me on your mind. You thought about me. Ain't that something? So when you, when you weren't thinking about him, he's still thinking about you. When you don't feel like praying, he still got you on his mind. He's still just, my child, my child. You need to come on back where you belong. You need to talk to him again. You need to let me know that you still love me. We know he still loves us. Do he know you still love him? So, what, so for the seventh time, he asked him, what do you see? Uh-oh. You know what? It's a small cloud. It's small. About the size of a man's hand. Wasn't real big. But see, Elijah had already heard the abundance of rain. He already knew what God can do. He already knew it was coming. But he prayed anyhow. He prayed. He interceded. He knew what they all needed. So even though you know something's going to happen, pray. Pray till you see it fruition. I, so sometimes I'm in pain. I say, Lord, I thank you for the healing, but I want you to manifest it to me. You know, sometimes we still feel the pain, but I said, Lord, I thank you because I know you're going to heal me because he's already did it so many times before. In your praise, in your praying, in your prayer, God can heal you. I'm a witness. He will heal you. You believe him? I believe him. I trust him. So when, so when, so when that, when the rain started to come, you say, oh, oh, listen, listen, servant, go. Go and tell, what's his name? Go and tell Ahab. Hitch up the chariot. You got to get out from here. You got to go before the rain stop you because it's going to come down. See, God don't just give you this a little bit. He going to say it again. Yeah, yeah. He overflows for you because he loves. Isn't it amazing how God loves us? Absolutely amazing. And we don't deserve it. But it's so amazing, his love that he has for us. So why come we can't just do right? I said, for somebody to be, in, be saved, not just in the church, but be saved, and then you decide to turn your back on God, what is wrong with you? I had a cousin like that. I said, girl, are you crazy? And she's the one that was responsible for me getting saved. I'm a girl. She's an eye. And I just kind of like, well, girl, mm -hmm. it's kind of like you better back up from them. But she's saved now. Praise God. 
She's back with the Lord. <laughs> She's back with the Lord. Yes, yes. Because we don't give up on no one. I don't care who it is, how bad it looks. We don't give up on him. I didn't give, never give, gave up on my brother. Before he died, I was praying for him and he accepted the Lord. This is before he, when he was in a hospital. So I never gave up on him. Held his hand. He said, I felt like let I felt like getting out of your hand. You was holding my hand, and I felt heat, and I wanted to let go. And something said, Don't let go, don't let go. <laughs> I said, That was God. That was the Holy Spirit. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But after the prayer, he was just smiling all over himself. And they said, What happened to you? He pointed at me. I said, No, 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 no. God happened to you. And he said, You're right. God happened. God happened. So I don't give up on nobody. And don't you give up on nobody. So abundance of rain came. And he said, go down. Get your chariot and go. But the hand of God was on um, Ahab. I keep on saying Ahab. Elijah. <laughs> and he beat the chariot down. So I don't know if y'all know about Flash. So that was the first Flash there, see. You know, that show, uh, what, he was a hero, I think, the Flash, run real fast, superhero, yeah. He ain't got nothing on him. But he beat the chariot, so he ran faster than the chariot and made it to Jezreel. So what I'm trying to say today is no matter what your situation is, no matter what it looks like, you say, we're small, it doesn't matter. God is large. He's large and in charge. But but people keep leaving. It doesn't matter. Don't you leave. Don't you leave. You keep praying. Because the abundance of rain is coming. The abundance of rain is coming. And I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord. I'm talking about the abundance. The Holy Ghost. Saving power. Yes, yes. Souls. Yes, yes. Don't you see it with your spiritual eye? That's all right. People who want to leave, let them leave. I'm telling you, don't you leave. You're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. But we're going to keep praying. And we're going to look for it. Look for the abundance of rain from heaven for us. Just because he loved us so much. And when I say, um, look again, when I say, look again, look how God has already blessed you. Look again. You don't see what God's doing right now, but look again. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. I don't see my healing, but look again. It's coming. It's coming. I don't feel my strength. Look again. Keep praying. Your strength is coming. It's coming. It's coming. I don't see what I need to see. So you say, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. Unstop my deaf ears so I can hear and see your goodness, Lord. I don't see no, these seats aren't full. Look again. Look again. Just look and pray. Are we praying? Are we praying or just sitting and complaining? Are we sowing seeds of discord? Don't do that. Don't do that. I know there's some doing it. I know. <laughs> but you better get your act together. And if you know somebody's doing it, you tell them, you better pray. You better pray. Yeah. Look again. Look back over your life. Look again. That's looking again. As you remember how God has brought you through and you know you didn't deserve it. He brought you through. He brought you over. He brought you out a lot of mess. Look again. Don't you turn your back on God. It's no time for that. It's time to come on in to safety. It's time to come on in to safety. And if you're already there, it's time to stay in here. I'm talking about staying with God. Stay with Jesus. He's the only one that's going to take you through. You talking about your, 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 your brother had died? That was nobody but God to keep you. Look at this. 
God did it. God did it. She didn't do it on her own. No, God did it. When we have loved ones that gone on in the, in the Lord, and we know they say, he keeps us. He strengthens us. Yes, yes. We got a reason to praise God. We got a right to praise God. I'm going to praise him. So that's why I said, when you see me praising God, I have a reason. I just come to encourage you. Look again. God's got something for us. Look again. He's waiting on us, maybe, to get ourselves together. So it's like, are you ready? Are you truly ready? Because it was something I was asking God for, and it's so clear. I was, you ain't ready? Oh, my God. I got to pray more. See, we got to be ready for what we're asking God for. But I saw I wasn't ready. So we have to be ready. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want you ain't ready. I'm sorry. You're not ready. You're not ready. We got to be ready. Not get ready, but be ready. If Jesus split the sky right now, are you ready? Are you ready to go back home with him? I say, take me on, Lord. Take me on. Or will you be running and hiding? Come out of that corner. You can't hide. You can't hide. There was an old mother that used to sing that, a gospel chapter. Come out of that corner. You can't hide. You can't hide, sinner. You can't hide. You can't hide Satan. You can't hide. Come on out of that corner. It's, it's prayer time. <laughs> you can't hide. All I'm saying, look again. Somebody say, look again. Look to Jesus and look again and pray. Pray. God bless you. God bless you. Look again. Hallelujah. Look again. Hallelujah. That's all we got to do is look again. It may not look like what we want it to look like, but look again. If we keep looking unto the hills from which cometh our help. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to turn into the hands of our superintendent, and he'll take us further into the service. Come on, didn't we end order tonight? Come on, come on, come on. Tell your neighbor it's time to bless our mother. Did you all hear me? It sounded like they didn't hear me. I said it's time to bless Mother Relay Brandon. I know we have a lot of folks watching online. And we want to give them that opportunity as the officer comes right now. We want to give those that are watching that are desiring to bless our mother tonight. On the screen, you will see where it says dollar sign Scott Chapel 1. You can bless or give your offering through that means, which is the cash app. Or you can do it through GiveLify by just typing Scott's Chapel. And I promise you it will get to her. Make sure in the note you put Mother Renee Brandon. Amen? If you are writing a check, do the exact same thing. Amen? Going to her. Amen? Every dime will be going to her. Amen? At the same time, if you are in the house, I want you to prepare your heart. Hallelujah. I am going to double my offering tonight because we said we have, I'm just going to give us the, uh, um, just a quick um, list. But for those that are watching, I just want to bless the offering so that you can go ahead and give as you have planned to. Father, I thank you. 
for the heart that has received your push to give towards the ministry. I pray right now that you bless it, Lord, hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray. Amen and amen. If you're watching me, you can go ahead and just give it right now. Go ahead and give it right now. Hallelujah. We thank you kindly for your gift. God will continue to increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. Even though we may close it out on your end, but still keep giving. It's Scott, dollar sign, Scott Chapel 1 or give the fire. Just type in, find Scott's Chapel Ministries and just give as the Lord leads you. Amen. In the house. It's listed superintendent $60, so I'm going to give $120. Pastors, $40. Elders, $30. District staff, $15. Ministers, $15. Licensed missionary, $35. Aspiring missionary, $25. But if we just scrap this, amen? Let's just scrap this because we love mother. Amen? Because we love mother, let's bless her based on our heart desire. But don't come below what you already wanted to give. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 At this time, if you will, we have a swipe. If you want to use your card, you can do that too. You can do that too. So if you want to do that, you are certainly welcome. Just let the officer know that. That's what you want to do. Amen. As I call Pastor Tony Smith to come while we're preparing and just people. Amen. God bless you. Come on, clap your hands, everybody, just momentarily. We give honor to the spirit of Christ, who's the head of our life, to our superintendent, administrative assistant, Pastor Henderson, and to the our supervisor. Once more time, did we enjoy her on tonight? Yes. And to First Lady Arna Moosey and to all the missionaries, District Missionary Barbara Jean Brown, and to First Lady, the greatest, awesome First Lady in the house tonight. It's not the first lady of Scott's Chapel. It is the first lady of new birth, Church of God in Christ, my wife, Sister Joyce Smith, Sister Scott, she's my three in one. So tell everybody that I told you, Sister Joyce Smith is my three in one. She's my wife of 43 years. She's my best friend and she's my only girlfriend. Come on, clap your hands for my wife, y'all. We we glad to we glad to be here on tonight to hear this woman of God said to us. I, I said to her uh, that message. So, so many thoughts came to my mind when she said, "Look again." I told her. I said, "Well, God spoke that to several people. Told Abraham to look again. He did. What is that you have in your hand? Told Abraham, look over in the thicket. So." I thank God for that word on tonight. Pray, pray our strength in the Lord. We yet tired on this past Saturday, beloved. The Lord bless us at new birth. We had our very first Christmas in July. And it was, my goodness, Mother Mother Dotson, the Lord bless us. So on Sunday, on Sunday, we had from Saturday's gathering, we had over, what was it, 16, 17 people. That was their Saturday that came for Sunday morning service. And I had a lady say to me during the service, she said, I can feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this church. And on Sunday, we took in four of them. And God is blessing. We're just so grateful to God. And we solicit your prayers for us on tonight. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Give you peace. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, um, at this time, we, um, we just. Amen. Amen. We are mother. I promise. I promised them before we started this meeting. I promise they get here on time. That I will let them go before 
a certain time and I'm pushing it. <laughs> they are looking at me. However, they've been on their hand and I want to stay faithful. So at this time, uh, as everybody given, everybody, if you've not given, we can still come to you. Amen. And certainly we just want to thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your giving. God will richly bless you more than you ever think in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, at this time, I will leave the floor. Mother is going to come. Actually, Mother, if you don't mind, let me quickly do this. Let me quickly do this. Um, you, have, you have something that was given to you. A ticket. Amen. Okay. Okay. You got you got something. Now, last night I was telling some folks, I said, just look under your pew. You got a gift there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm talking to the people. <laughs> So under your pew, you have, I was saying that last night and everybody was going, but under your pew, you have something. Just reach underneath. You will see an envelope. If it's not under your pew, you don't have it. But if you, when you touch it, you will find it. Yes, go ahead now. <laughs> go ahead now. Hey, oh, see, Sister Paula. See, Sister, Sister Joyce. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. Also, also there, there was two for that. Now we have raffles that we're doing, and uh, four raffles, and uh, uh, I don't, yeah. So she's going to quickly do that quickly, as we as we let them go, and before we let mother, because mother has to go back tonight. Quickly, let's do this quickly. I'll pull one, mother will pull one. Uh, I'm going to call. Yeah, you call it. I can't see that. <laughs> you again? Yeah, she found her. Yes, she was. Yep. All right. Sister Battle, where you at? We got one. Mother, mother will pull one. Yeah, okay. Let me, let me. Five, six, three. Sister, Sister Pole one. Sister Wood one. Oh my God. Five, five, nine. Five, five, nine. Five, five, nine. All right. Five, five, five. Next. What did you get? Oh, no, I'm Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Blessed is his holy name. <laughs> All right. That's it. Well, certainly we thank God. For those that may not, for those that may not understand, for those, for those that may not understand this, 
our district have worked tirelessly all year long all year long in fact they made it so easy for myself and the officers to do what we are doing tonight where we came and have fellowship and i just was led to do this back to them every night amen 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 tomorrow night is another night that we're going to do exactly just this and i pray that if you didn't get none to them tonight some folks that got it tonight did not get it last night amen so it may be your turn tomorrow night but tell somebody about what is happening at this time i will step aside and give room for mother to come at this time let's say amen for her Praise God. Look again, y'all. You know what? Missionary Barbara Brown. Everybody say, Missionary Barbara Brown. Stand up for a minute, please. We love you. We do. I'm the um, district missionary interim, but we're going to look again. Missionary, district missionary, Barbara Brown. This is your district missionary now. Headquarters district, I won't make you ashamed. I thank God for Superintendent Musi and Mother Brandon for asking me to do. I won't make you ashamed. I'm a hard worker, and I want to support you, support you, support you. 
And I just want to give God the glory. Give God the glory. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I've been in the headquarters for a long time. A long time, but when Bishop Mark Perry had asked me to go with Superintendent Salter, I don't know what's going to happen with that. And I just thank God for Superintendent Anamusi. I'm right here at home. Praise Fellowship was six hours away, six and a half hours away. But I did try to go as much as possible. But I just thank God for you for seeing. I don't know, think seeing whatever you see in me to. But I will be obedient. I will be obedient. And I'm going to work with you and work with our First Lady. I love you. I love my children. I love my children. And thank you. Thank you so much for accepting me. Amen. 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 Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Let's give her a hand. Let's give her a hand. Yes, yes. District Missionary Barbara Brown. Headquarters District. Headquarters District. <laughs> yes, she, she is a hard worker. Y'all ready to go home? Let us stay. Let us stand. I said, y'all ready to go home? I heard back here. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Praise God. Praise God. We think there's hospitality. Before hospitality comes, before hospitality comes, I will give room for the chairman. He wants to make an announcement. Everybody say amen. amen. Say it again like you really mean it. Uh, congratulations, District Missionary. Yes. 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 And I'm going to do this not in order, but just as I'm being led right now, to our supervisor of women. Thank you for feeding us, yes. especially me. I needed everything you said. Thank you our first administration assistant and, and everything that he is to the church of God in Christ and our, our jurisdiction. I thank you so much, Pastor Brandon. It's good to see you. Our first lady of the district, we appreciate you. You have showed us how to be a tower of strength. When strength is not supposed to be there, uh, we talked about barriers. You got one around you. And we thank God for it. <laughs> this is one of those times we can say, you don't know like I know. How God keeps what belongs to him. Amen. We are blessed in that tomorrow night is what night? And whose night is that? I want to tell you something. Don't you dare stay home. Whether you have any money or not, don't you dare stay home. And don't you dare forget to invite somebody to come with you. We have a superintendent par none. And I'm going to say it again. I said it last night and I'll say it again. I've been in this church since 1965. That's 57 years. And I've never been under a superintendent as grand as this one. I would have been gone 
if it hadn't been for him. I was tired of all of this because I didn't see no souls getting more. And all you was asking for was my money and didn't know my name. I was getting ready to pack my grip and take a trip. I do have somewhere else to go. But God has blessed me for eight, with 86 years. And he's never left me. And with the sermon, the message that we heard tonight, I'm looking again. Because I just might have missed something. So I ask that you pray for me because on, I just go share this briefly. On February the 15th of this year, my niece had to take me to the hospital. I couldn't stand hardly. I did not know that my heart was bad. And she got me to, I didn't want to go to the hospital. I went to urgent care. And the doctor said, I can't do nothing for you. And they took me, she took me to the hospital. They worked on me and kept me. I got out seven days later and I'm still feeling the effects of it. But I'm still here. So having said that, I want you to pray for me because I'm coming back tomorrow night. If I have to come with a wagon train. But I'm coming back tomorrow night. I want to honor the superintendent of our district. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand? Hospitality. Oh, hospitality coming again. They've been busy. <laughs> they, and they've been doing a good job, a marvelous job. And I want to thank all of our finance people. You have done a marvelous job. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mother Brandon, thank you for such a wonderful message. And on behalf of uh, our superintendent, Anna Mosey, and the hospitality department, we like to present you with this basket. And God bless you. Where we stand, <laughs> we praise God. Uh oh, you okay? All right, all right. <laughs> praise God. It's for real. This time. Everybody's staying. Everybody's ready to go home. All right. <laughs> we praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because you met us here today. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your love and kindness, Lord. Lord, we ask that you look on us right now. Take us from this place, but never from your presence, Lord. Give us safe travels home over the highways, streets, and byways, and bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen.